In minutes now, the work of the United States Marine Corps Nuclear Weapons Loading Team will be completed, and the A-4 Skyhawk will be airborne and prepared to carry out her mission, to strike at an enemy target with what has been called the ultimate weapon, or in this time of peace, merely to execute a maneuver as part of an alert readiness exercise. Whatever the purpose of the mission may be, Marine Corps personnel who handle and load nuclear weapons are a vital link in a vital weapons delivery system that demands unfailing attention to duty and an uncompromising quest for perfection. At each step of the way, from stockpile to loading, utmost precautions have been taken to assure the reliability of the weapon. The checking and rechecking are over. For members of the nuclear weapons loading team, there is the satisfaction of a job well done. The work of the nuclear weapons loading team begins with a receipt of an operations order describing the job to be done, identifying the device to be used, the aircraft to be loaded, and other details. All nuclear weapons loading teams are limited to five members, a loading officer, either commissioned or warrant, who is responsible for safety, compliance with the two-man rule, and adherence to the step-by-step -step loading procedures recommended in the appropriate checklist. The team NCOIC, with rank of sergeant or above, is team leader. In addition to ensuring compliance with the two-man rule, he controls all operations of his teammates during the loading procedures by reading the appropriate checklist aloud. All other functions of the loading procedure are performed by the remaining three members of the team who may qualify for such assignments as SATS loader operator, boom operator, cockpit man or verifier, or as port or starboard men. At pre-briefing and briefing sessions like this, Special problems that may arise during the weapon loading procedure are resolved by reference to NAVAIR and Special Weapons Ordinance Publications, SWAPs. They contain authoritative information about nuclear weapon loading, testing, safety practices, tools to be used, and most important, specifying the sequence in which operations must be performed. The indispensable guide for all operations to be performed by the loading team at the loading site is the Nuclear Weapons Checklist, which contains abbreviated procedures derived from the Airborne Weapons Stores Loading Manual. Different checklists are available for different weapon aircraft loading combinations. The use of any checklist other than the correct one can prove hazardous. Prior to each loading evolution, the loading officer and crew leader must read the required reading section of the checklist to ensure adherence to instructions and procedures. In the event of a conflict between procedures in the checklist and the loading manual, the manual takes precedence until the conflict is resolved by the Naval Air Systems Command. When the briefing sessions come to an end, tools and equipment to be used during the loading cycle must be checked out to avoid protracted delays once the loading operations begin. The external power unit is carefully inspected to ensure that it is in satisfactory working condition. A toolbox inventory is carried out to be sure that all special tools, as well as the more common ones, are at hand. Perhaps the most important item in the equipment inventory of the loading team is the unique high-performance weapons loader, SATS, S-A-T-S, for short airfield tactical support. When operated in conjunction with an MHU-125E skid platform, the SATS loader provides a safe and efficient method of transporting, handling, and loading the nuclear weapon within the loading area. The route traveled is always checked in advance to assure an unobstructed passage to the loading point. The weapon is offloaded on the starboard side of the aircraft and positioned between 12 and 15 feet from the nose wheel to await inspection and certification.
The arrangement of men, materiel, and equipment in the loading area is no random thing, but based on the recommendations of NAVAIR 01-40AV-75, the Airborne Weapons Stores Loading Manual for Achieving Efficiency and Safety. In anticipation of the arrival of the nuclear weapon, special precautions are in effect to protect the security of the loading operation and the safety of all personnel. Two 50-pound bottles of CO2 must be located within the immediate vicinity of the aircraft as part of the emergency firefighting plan. Specially trained firefighters may also be assigned to the area. In compliance with existing safety regulations, members of the EOD unit are present during every loading evolution to render assistance in case an emergency situation arises. The loading team has the responsibility of inspecting and certifying the condition of the aircraft and the nuclear weapon with which it is to be mated. All steps within the checklist must be performed in sequence and no step may be omitted except as noted. Aircraft preparation and inspection and weapon inspection sections may be performed without regard to sequence to each other. However, both sections must be completed and certified before actual loading operations may proceed. Loaded stations, rack safety pin installed. During all procedures, the two-man rule must be adhered to strictly. All loaded stations are checked to make sure that the safety pins are installed. Check. Caution, if TA-47 shorting cable is installed in pylon, AMAC wiring check is invalid. Do not proceed further. Caution, Caution noted. noted. TA-47 shorting cable not installed. Check. All armament switches deselected, off, safe, or normal. The armament switches are located in the cockpit. Check. Emergency salvo handle forward. Check. Lab set is brief. RA-1. And RA-2 are the computerized release angle settings, which form an important part of low-angle bombing system, LABS, a special technique employed during the delivery of a nuclear weapon to a target. RA-1, 70.3. Check. RA-2, 97.4. Check. RA settings are found in the operation order. Bridge caps disconnected. Cartridges removed. Check. Sway braces and ejector foot retracted. Check. Suspension hooks open. Check. Tail fairing lateral pull out. Brackets attached aft disconnect bar. Check. The aircraft has a clean bill of health. Now the nuclear weapon must be inspected. Weapon inspection must be conducted and supervised by the loading team officer, assisted by a member of the loading team. To ensure accuracy, certain technical data is read from the weapon to the loading officer, who compares it with information in the operation order. Weapon serial number? P904. Check, P904. Weapon and bomb truck skid secured. Check. Warning, if weapon ready safe switch in ready position, notify proper authority, rotate ready safe switch to safe. Warning noted. Weapon ready, safe, safe. Check. Pull out switch, not actuated. Check. SEP installed. When installed, the strike enabling plug, SEP, permits arming of the nuclear warhead. Between missions, it is usually removed to prevent unintentional arming. Check. EMR shield installed. This shield protects the weapon against the hazards of stray electromagnetic radiation. Check. Weapon settings. Six position selector switch. These settings are listed in the operation order from which they are often transferred to the checklist at the briefing. A. Check. T.A. Two safe separation timers, T.A. and T.B., are incorporated within the weapon. Forty. Check. TB, 42, check. REFF, FF, check. Three position selector switch, H, check. H, 
1225 wrench available? Check. CF-1806 with weapon? The CF cable provides the electrical connection between weapon and aircraft. Authorized weapon cable combinations are listed in the required reading section of the checklist under restrictions. Check. Wire rope assembly available? Check. Weapon not damaged? Certain types of dents and abrasions in the skin of the weapon may indicate internal damage that could impair its reliability. Check. Suspension lugs installed? Check. Fins in X, 45 degree position? Check. Pull out plug protective cover installed? Check. This completes the weapon inspection procedure. The officer certifies that the weapon is acceptable for loading. The weapon loading procedure is divided into two parts. Part A is the preparation phase. Part B is the actual weapon loading operation. The preparation phase consists largely of getting the parent rack and the aircraft ready to accept the weapon. The NCO reads the checklist and controls all operations, while the team officer remains responsible for overall safety, proper loading procedures, and ensuring compliance with the two-man rule. Note, all checks contained in NAVAIR 01-712-13 must be completed within previous 24 hours and after last flight. Noted. AMAC wiring release system checks, aircraft preparation inspection, and weapon inspection completed and signed. Check. Since the receipts verify that the actions have been taken within the proper time period, the NCO proceeds with the next checklist item. Power moved, aircraft grounded. Although the external power supply cable is not yet connected to the aircraft, it is up and available. Make sure that the grounding cable has good contact. Check. Check. Armament control switches. The armament switches are located in the cockpit. In loading a nuclear weapon, nothing is ever taken for granted. Verification must be obtained that all armament switches are either in the off safe or normal position. Master arm and off. Check. Verified. Armament mode select. Off. Check. Verified. Station one through five deselected. Check. Verified. Walleye test normal. Check. Verified. Item by item. The setting of each remaining armament control is checked and verified in the same careful manner. Guns charge, deselected. Guns left and right, deselected. DCU normal emergency power, normal power. DCU option selector, off, locked, and sealed. Mercy salvo handle forward. Check. Verified. CF-1806 installed. With the armament switches checked, only three steps remain before actual loading gets underway. Since this is to be an alert strike mission, the CF-1806 pullout cable must be installed. The CF-1806 cable is installed in the Aero 7A ejector rack. During installation of the cable, sufficient slack must be allowed to provide for pullout cable lanyard travel. Check. Check. Weapon loading equipment position rig. This is the cue for the SATS operator to position the weapon under the center line rack, the station to be loaded. The operator guides the weapon into alignment with the center line of the Aero 7A rack, about five inches below the suspension hooks. When the suspension lugs and hooks are lined up, the brakes of the SATS loader are set, and the left rear wheel is chopped. Check. Remove pull-out plug protective cover. 
Removal of the pull-out plug protective cover concludes the preparation phase for weapon loading. Check. Phase B, the actual weapon loading operation, begins. Raise weapon, last suspension hook. The SAFs operator handles the loader during all operations, except when the boom comes into play for the final loading adjustments. These adjustments are the responsibility of the boom operator, who is responsible for locking the weapon into the suspension rack. In mating the weapon to the parent rack, the only metal-to-metal -metal sound that should be heard is when suspension hooks and lugs latch into place. Check. Visually inspect rack indicates lock. Visual inspection confirms latching is secure, but the sear indicator verifies it. Check. Remove weapon tie-down strap. Check. Ease hoist, gently shake weapon to ensure weapon is supported by suspension hook. Check. Install rack safety pin. The safety pin should be installed from the right-hand side of the rack to be sure that the electrical circuit remains open. Check. Now that its job has been completed, the SATS loader should be removed. Weapon centered and hooked. The Arrow 7A suspension hooks should be centered in weapon suspension lugs, and suspension lugs should be fully aft on suspension hooks. Check. Adjust sway braces and ejector foot. After removing the sway brace hold back bands, Adjust the sway brace screws until the pads are in contact with the weapon. Warning, do not over tighten the sway brace adjustment screws. Simultaneously, tighten the forward left and aft right sway brace screws one quarter turn. Again, simultaneously, tighten the forward right and aft left screws one quarter turn. Total tightening must not exceed one half turn. Adjust the ejector foot until contact is made with the weapon. Then back off to the first detent. Be sure that the black line on the ejector foot that shows the limit of extension is not visible. Check. Connect CF cable to weapon using 81225 wrench. Connect the CF cable to the weapon pullout plug hand tight. Then use the H1225 wrench for final tightening. Check. Connect wire rope assembly to weapon pull-out switch. Check. Connect CF cable lanyard and wire rope assembly to lateral pull-out bracket. Connecting the CF cable bale and the wire rope assembly to the lateral pull-out bracket will conclude the weapon loading phase. The CF cable bale and wire rope assembly must be connected to the aft lateral pullout bracket exactly as shown in the nuclear weapons checklist, NAVAIR 01-40AVM-75-53. Check. Nothing is left to chance where the detonation of a nuclear weapon is concerned. The checklist provides a step-by-step -step verification procedure known as post-loading quality assurance. All arm and switches deselected, off, safe, or normal. Check. Verified. DC option selector off, locked, and sealed. Check. Verified. Rack safety pin installed. Check. Verified. Sway braces and adjuster foot adjusted. Check. Verified. Breach caps disconnected, cartridges removed. Check. Verified. CF cable connected to weapon and aircraft. Check. Verified. CF cable bail connected lateral pull-out bracket. Check. Verified. Wire rope assembly connected to weapon and aircraft. Check. Verified. Warning, prior to applying power, cockpit switches and controls must be able to receive power. Warning, Warning noted. noted.
Supply power? Power is needed to test the DCU warning lamp. Set. Warning, do not rotate DCU option selected to ground air during this test. Warning, Warning noted. DCU option selected safe. Warning lamp off. Check. Verified. Press the test DCU warning lamp. Lamp on while pressed. Check. Verified. DCU option selected off, lock and sealed. Warning lamp off. Check. Verified. Remove power. Check. Warning. If weapon ready safe switch is in ready position, ensure power removed. Notify proper authority. Wait 30 minutes. Rotate ready safe switch to safe. Warning, Warning noted. noted. Weapon ready safe safe. Check. Check. The aircraft and the weapon are now in alert readiness status. If command decision orders a strike, the aircraft and the weapon are moved to the arming area and prepared for launch. When the pilot has completed his mandatory control checks, the members of the weapon loading team take over to arm the Aero 7A ejector rack. Hands overhead request that the pilot ensures all armament switches are off or safe. Once he has completed the armament control check, the pilot's hands must remain on the windscreen to prevent accidental contact with the controls while the weapon is being armed. The closed fist, extended upward to meet the horizontal palm of the other hand, signals the loading team to install the cartridges. Thumbs up tells the loading supervisor that the rack is armed and ready. The extracting hand motion tells the loading team members to remove the safety pin from the rack pylon. Loading is now complete, and the pilot prepares to carry out the mission. <laughs>